Okay, this is gonna be very informal, unscripted, because I have not recorded in a million years and that is on me. I only have like <laughs> two subscribers anyway, but this is a really nice, I think, reflection exercise for myself. Um, I have not been very motivated when it comes to recording, but I am trying to remind myself that like as a researcher and as a research process, it's really, interesting and important to record my thoughts record my processes and I guess like any changes in direction um but I also think in terms of self-accountability it's really nice to have a space even if it's just me and a camera um to talk about how I'm doing what decisions I'm making what I'm prioritizing um and just getting through the PhD so hi my name is Erin this is a student journey a channel dedicated to sharing a bit about my own student journey as well as supporting you on yours this video is very much about my own journey so for context I am a first year PhD student in education at the University of Cambridge um, I'm doing a PhD after spending many many years in the world of work and I'm looking at higher education research in particular in this video I just want to reflect on my first term um, people don't necessarily talk about PhDs in terms but I have been kind of following the university timetable and term and, and dividing my time um, in respect to that so I started my PhD in October it's currently February so I'm actually halfway through second term um, and probably halfway through my first year and it has been a lot <laughs> it's been very hard um and i guess the things i'd like to talk about are my priorities going into it um what i feel i've done well and what i focused on um and and basically all of the barriers that i have faced on the whole though i have had a good time i do not regret making the decision to do a phd um i spent a lot of time thinking about it and it is it was something i really wanted to do and it continues to be that way so whilst i do talk about instances of stress um, in many cases they are my own fault. <laughs> so one video I made was what I wanted to kind of prioritise and do um, the summer before I started my PhD. Um, I did watch that back which is always very cringe and uncomfortable um, but some of the things I spoke about in that included taking a break um, as well as establishing a routine. I did those two very successfully, um, I got to go away with friends which was really nice I got to rest um, and just enjoyed doing things, um, which I don't know, I think that pace um, is very different to the pace I've experienced recently. So I'm really grateful I took the time out to do that and I'm really grateful um, for my friend who really encouraged me to take that rest. The second goal I set was establishing a routine, which I do feel like I did successfully. Um, in terms of kind of moving to Cambridge and starting my degree in October, um, I do feel as though consistently I have mostly had a good sleep routine. Um, I have gone to the gym like the, the number of times I would like to each week and feel, um, I guess, just really motivated or at least really directed um, with that sense of routine, uh, particularly morning routines great on track um it's sometimes stopping work <laughs> that has been a bit of a problem um and i think that's something i'll try to continue to work on i guess throughout my phd um and it's also something i guess i'll discuss in this video when talking about barriers and things that i have struggled with one of the other things i said i would do was upskill to i guess prepare myself for the kind of pace of academic life this is probably something i did a bit half-heartedly yes every now and then i opened up this um, statistics book by Andy Field and had a bit of a read of it um, but I didn't necessarily do what felt like any pre-course work um, or, or any kind of really significant prep work. That being said I'm still happy I took that break um, and a lot of the courses I signed up for were beginner friendly and have um, very much been designed with the expectation that I know nothing <laughs> or, or very little okay so moving into priorities and how i have approached kind of october november december time in particular um my priorities for my first term 
were to kind of read widely and to get up to speed with statistics in particular. So I am doing a mixed methods project. Um, I am very much used to doing qualitative interpretivist work in the social sciences and don't necessarily have any academic history um, working with statistics within like a project. So I signed up for a number of courses working from what was titled basic quantitative analysis to uh, a course I'm doing this term called further topics in multivariate analysis um, and those are kind of online and in person um, classes that I've had to take. I've been assessed on them and thankfully progressed to where I am um, at this point. That being said, they have been difficult. Um, I really enjoy, oh, I'm such a nerd, but I really enjoy statistical theory. Um, that all sits well with me. Um, I think it's just been a bit of a struggle um, adjusting to new software. I have dyspraxia. Um, I make a lot of mistakes and grammatical errors. Um, and the smallest kind of like bit of syntax on software such as Stata um, can really like screw you over for about 10 minutes where you're just wondering why this code isn't working, why um, you're not getting the results you're after and chances are it's because you know I have mistakenly put greater than as smaller than um, or I have forgotten a comma or I have put something in a capital letter. So that is really frustrating and has taken some patience. That being said, I am really proud um, of how much I have really focused in on that goal um, and how I guess like frequently I have attended those classes and tried my best to like make the time um, to really work through and understand the content. Um, so every time I am on Stata or R, which I have decided to learn in addition, um, I just, I feel like, I don't know, feel like I'm doing science. <laughs> um, so that has been really enjoyable and that has definitely been a key focus and I'm really happy whilst it has been challenging that um, I have given it I have given it the attention that is necessary. My other priority was just settling in, um, getting used to routine, um, getting used to being in a somewhat new place. Um, I did do my undergraduate degree at Cambridge and I did live there for a number of years, um, but it had been a while since then. Um, so just readjusting to like a new living space, um, a new, I guess, group of friends and group of people, um, and just, yeah, existing in a space you're familiar with in a different way um, has been something that's taken time, but definitely probably hasn't taken as much time uh, as it could if I were coming from a completely new context. The last thing I've kind of prioritised um, academically in particular has just been reading around the field. Um, again, this has been so enjoyable. It is why I'm doing a PhD. Like, I can't pretend I don't enjoy this stuff. I was actually talking to my friend who was like, wow, you're actually such a nerd um, and, and she's right, like I claim it. I think what has been a bit difficult has been that in doing all this reading, reading that I really enjoy, I definitely go down rabbit holes. I get so excited about anything. I need to remember that I have a PhD project that I need to stay on track for. So I do a lot of reading around quantitative sociology um, as well as kind of cultural sociology and sociology of cultures. Um, because I'm looking at class. There are other things I look into, particularly around higher education. And what I have found is that the moment I read something, I'm like, wow, this is it. This is what I'm doing. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I will completely rebrand and be a cultural sociologist or um, any reading I've done around public policy. I'll be like, that's it. This is, this is a thing for me. I can drop what I'm doing and I'm just gonna follow that route. Or sometimes I don't even think I'll drop what I'm doing. I just imagine that I have, you know, four other versions of me <laughs> that will do this alongside my PhD. So I'm really happy that excitement's there. I'm really happy that I'm doing that reading and just exploring, I guess, the field. Um, but I need to rein it in. <laughs> and not get too overwhelmed or overexcited imagining these like 10 different versions of myself. That being said, again, I'm not complaining. I'm really happy to be doing this work. Um, I just think I, in everything being so new, I have this kind of childlike enthusiasm. Uh, that means I just wanna do everything. It's a bit like when you go to the cinema and you watch a movie and you're really moved by it and you're like, that's it. This is my personality from now on. 
that is me reading a journal article and I just need to rein it in a bit. I'm now going to talk a bit about the barriers I faced or the, the difficulties I have had. Um, the first for me has been work-life balance, which really, really surprised me. I spent the time establishing a routine. Um, I spent the last three years working since doing a master's and before I did my master's I spent about two years working so I thought that I had incredible skill set that I could just transfer from the working world as I entered my PhD. In some of the induction talks there were loads of things about oh make sure you have a work-life balance or try to not work for at least one day a week and I looked at these people as if they were being super silly, I was just like Pfft. I don't have that problem, don't need to tell me twice. And that attitude completely disappeared. Like something took over me. I don't know if it was my past self from undergrad, but something just happened where I felt like I had to work nonstop. Even though I didn't have a deadline in my first term, um, apart from being assessed in a few statistics papers, no one was really chasing me um, to produce anything, to write anything. But I felt so much pressure um, and yes, it's very much internalized or it's not very clear where it comes from, but like the environment itself just turned me back into this like overworking, highly stressed, highly anxious person. And I, I think I was just really taken aback by how quickly that consumes me. In relation to that, I really struggled with turning off. Like, yes, I had a good morning routine. Yes, I would go to the gym in the morning. I'd start my day like very kind of clearly prepared as to, with what I wanted to do. However, it was like there was no off switch. Um, I am much slower at reading journal articles than I think I am. If I was feeling that kind of energy and felt like I was in the flow, um, even if it had passed the time I wanted to stop working, I would just keep working. Um, I think for fear that if I stop working, I'll lose that flow. I'll, I won't be able to come back tomorrow with the same mindset or the same thoughts. And I think there was just this like obsession with preventing, I guess preventing a kind of loss of, of energy, enthusiasm, concentration. And I don't exactly have a clear coping mechanism for that just yet. But what I am trying to do is have an almost cool down period. Um, so in the way you start slowing things down when you're exercising, uh, rather than completely stopping in the middle of, the, of a run. Um, I'm trying to say, okay, in the next 30 minutes, you're going to stop working. You're going to write some notes so that you know where to pick up tomorrow. Um, that's the plan. <laughs> and as I said, I think a lot of those feelings are wrapped up in this almost lack of trust in my own ability to resume that work the next day or after a break. So that is something I'm trying to work on. Another issue I had, again, relating to work-life balance, obviously, <laughs> was um, how many things I took on on the side. This is not a new issue for me. I know I work too much. And I know that I put myself in situations where I maybe bite off more than I can chew. And I went into Cambridge or I went into my PhD working about two to three jobs. And actually I'm not meant to work more than six hours per week based on my kind of funding stipulations. Um, ironically a lot of this work is for the university which is where it becomes very messy as a PhD student. I got into a position where I was working way more hours than I should be, yes with regards to my funding stipulations but also just in terms of avoiding kind of physical and emotional burnout. Some of the roles I take on are particularly around caring um, by which I mean kind of pastoral support or um, equity and inclusion and that work does come with a kind of emotional cost. There was one week in particular where I actually ended up missing lectures because I was spending way too much time um, on, on this work instead of my PhD. At the end of term, um, I did actually resign from that role and I did explain to my employer that this work is incompatible with doing a full-time PhD. And whilst I truly care for that role and I don't regret having prioritised it over my PhD at the time. Um, I, and the reason I did that was because I recognise like people's welfare is involved. Um, for that reason, I resigned from the role. I don't think, even, even if it were um, restricted to a certain number of hours, I think I will always go, not always, but I think I would most likely go above and beyond because people's welfare and in my opinion, safety is very much concerned. Um, so for that reason, I resigned from the role. I found it really, really difficult to do. 
Um, but I think it's really important in terms of setting up boundaries essentially whilst I'm doing my PhD. Yes, I <laughs> was working, I was working a bit too much, but the work I have done, I have found incredibly rewarding, um, incredibly useful for potential future roles and essentially very meaningful. My final barrier um, or perhaps just personal complaint um, has been having to move to Cambridge. Um, of course that is what happens when you do a PhD but I think I have felt as somebody who very much has established a life outside of academia and isn't necessarily super eager to relive my student days um, I've sometimes found it a bit of a pain in the backside to move to Cambridge to live on my own or you know I do live with other students but to live away from my partner um, and, and the life I established as a working person um, and push myself into what sometimes feels like a very childlike role um, I know PhD students are you know much older much further into their academic career than others but there are loads of instances where I do feel like I'm being treated like a child or at least being treated like an 18 year old um, so it has been hard kind of managing this adult life outside of Cambridge where I have jobs where I have created a living space I'm comfortable with um, alongside this identity as a somewhat childlike person who doesn't yet have the tools to look after themselves um, and that's not to be harsh or say people have been patronising um, but I think there is an expectation of this residential model where you move to university um, and you live in halls that doesn't necessarily fit with where I am um, in my personal life. I know it sounds weird and maybe doesn't make that much sense but I think there is this kind of underlying tension between my personal and professional identity and then this kind of idea of a student um, which I am as I kind of said like I'm so enthusiastic about the work I do but I think there are other expectations that are placed on me and my way of living um, because yeah because I'm a student. Outside of my course as a PhD student and outside of the work that I do I have been doing things for fun um, so I joined my university's powerlifting society which has been really enjoyable um, they ran a novice competition which was really fun um, I didn't necessarily lift anything significant um, but the whole point of the competition was basically to get used to the format of a competition the rules etc I've also done other things like join choirs which has been really nice um, as I said, turning off has been difficult, so having something structured in the evening that I have to stop working for um, has kind of been like a nice push to get me to stop working and do something that I enjoy. And in addition to this, I've been able to be social, um, I've been able to make new friends as well as see existing friends who still live in Cambridge or who live in London, which is relatively close by. Um, so that has been enjoyable. Kind of going back to work, um, the work I have done particularly the kind of consulting and project work has been a really good learning opportunity for me um i kind of need to remind myself that i do still have at least two more years of a phd so there is no rush to make myself you know super employable or to to have some sort of um guaranteed work offer for after but it has been really helpful and just giving me a bit of an insight into different ways of working and different sectors that is pretty much a reflection of my first term as a PhD student at the University of Cambridge. Um, as I said, it has been really enjoyable. I don't think the challenges are super distinct. I think they're things that everyone faces, but they have been really important um, in terms of my own learning and thinking about how I will tackle those barriers moving forward as I, well, complete at this point my second term. Um, I probably will do a few more videos while I'm being organised today. Um, particularly around some of the goals I've set for the year, again just to hold myself to account, um, but also the aims I have moving forward um, for the rest of the year. There are some really exciting things coming up including um, being able to attend and present at conferences including a poster presentation which is great because I put that on my PhD bucket list so I'm excited to, to kind of share those with you with myself etc um, as I yeah continue on this journey. Thank you so much for watching, um, do be sure to like, subscribe and all of that good stuff. Um, please do share in the comments below how you have found I guess the last six months 
whether you are somebody who is applying for a PhD, somebody who's doing a PhD, someone who's doing something completely different, um, I'd love to hear how things are going.